Hello YouTube, this is Matt Wicks here once again with a new model review for you. Uh, now obviously these have already been out in the first batch, this is now the second batch. Um, this is a Helgen Metropolitan Bobo locomotive and this one is number 12 Sarah Siddons. Uh, now this one I originally did pre-order on the first batch but it was cancelled. Not quite sure as to why as they had the uh, tooling apparently for the different chassis as it has different brake gear etc and uh, braking equipment but uh, it was cancelled anyway and it was re-announced I think it was the end of uh, last year 2015 uh, so this is the second batch it arrived about oh, a few days ago last week and uh, this was ordered from Rails of Sheffield who I think are the cheapest around at the moment at £107 uh, a little bit of history on the uh, and background locomotive history. Uh, in the 1920s, the Metropolitan Railway placed an order with Metropolitan Vickers of a Barrow in Furness for the rebuilding of the 20 electric locomotives. When work started on the first locomotive, it was found to be impractical and uneconomical, and the order was changed to building completely new locomotives using equipment recovered from the originals. The locomotives were built in 1922 to 1923 and weighing 62 tonnes. They had four MV339 300 HP or 20 kilowatt motors giving a one hour rating of 1200 HP or 890 kilowatts and a top speed of 65 miles an hour. In 1925, locomotive 15 was exhibited on the Metropolitan Railway stand at the British Empire exhibition. After electrification to Amersham was completed in 1961, the locomotives were withdrawn from passenger service, although three were kept for departmental use. One locomotive number five, John Hamden, is preserved as a static display in the London Transport Museum in Covent Garden. Number 12, which this one is, Sarah Siddons, has been used for heritage events, notably in 2013 January when running in conjunction with Metropolitan Railway locomotive number one, or Met One, on a steam excursions to mark the 150th anniversary of the opening of the Metropolitan Railway. Uh, as I say, there are 20 of these, not actually made, but there's 20 names, uh, a few of them they've done already, and this one has been the one that everybody has wanted. And it came out just last week. So let's have a closer look at the model and see how all the details are and how it compares to the actual uh, preserved example. So in terms of weight of this model, it weighs 389 grams, which should be plenty enough to pull quite a few coaches. Uh, its drive is on both axles and it's a three pole motor internally and takes a 21 DCC pin chip, uh, which is easily accessible unscrewing four screws from the underneath of the chassis uh, to remove the body shell and to attach it into the middle of the actual plug socket so quite easy to get to and uh, quite easy to fit which I'll be doing at some point uh, next week okay let's take a closer look at this model now from Helgen and we start at the front end where it has two front ends so uh, you can either have the front or the back one of the two um, so to start off with electrics it has three lights on the front which illuminates when in forward or reverse and it also has a cab which is also lit as well flush glazing on the front and also the side doors and windows it has handrails around the front hand uh, front end or back end and also a destination panel which on this side says special and on the other end it says Baker Street you can see separately fitted uh, braking pipes here we have uh, probably air and vacuum uh, one of the two and also a screw link uh, coupling on the front end 
uh, you can see on the buffer beam just in the middle also sprung buffers on this as well and you have a normal NEM coupling socket on the bogey as you can see either side you can see there's two uh, black pipes coming down from the buffer beam as well this may get in the way with the uh, the NEM sockets and coupling uh, when it's moving around but generally it's nicely uh, painted and decorated on the front end here um, nicely lined out edge to the buffer beam uh, sprung buffers as I mentioned uh, there is one small decorating um, issue on this which is not correct uh, the actual links from the um, air and vacuum pipes they should not be red they should be the same colour as the body um, if people think I'm being a bit picky I have pictures of them just in case and um, you can quite clearly see on any of these pictures especially this one that they are not red so that's a slight issue there, slight decoration um, error on that but never mind it still looks very nice there's also a number 12 in the centre so you know what loco it is as well moving round to the side and just zoom out a little bit see the red um, sole bars going along the, uh, the side there some lovely detail on the bogey for all the electrical pickups etc um, and as I mentioned before this model has a slightly different tooling to the others uh, due to extra detail on the underside for different braking gears uh, and, and braking equipment um, but that's nicely replicated here uh, maybe a little bit more detail on the yeah, grey box here with a couple of extra uh, I think there's some yellow or red um, and green sort of uh, spots on there on the actual original um, but other than that very nice also a nice uh, plate there I believe that's not uh, a um, etch plate that's just um, a printed plate I'm sure somebody will uh, be able to do an etch for that and we've got some nice lining around the doors um, highlighting on the uh, handle uh, a nice emblem for the Metropolitan Railway number 12 printed in the center and uh, two windows in the middle part of the uh, locomotive around where the uh, motors and electricals are for this locomotive um, generally very nice lots of detail along the uh, sole bar but again there is a decoration issue on this uh, the steps which you can see here and here should not have a black outline they should be the same color as the actual uh, sole bar and again on the photo I have it also shows this quite clearly you can see that they are red all the way around and on this they are black so possibly if you've got a very steady hand I haven't these days but I will have a go myself you can repaint this and also the pipes on the front if you wish uh, I believe it's just a standard red uh, probably blood red I would probably say uh, which I've been using for my buffer beams for a little while um, which you can probably do it yourself if you wish but still slight attention to detail um, part which doesn't really matter if you are willing to ignore it but uh, this is supposed to be a preserved example and I would have, would have expected they would have picked up on that uh, with recent pictures um, I also do another version of this model which is I think it's about 1990s uh, with the sort of uh, red oxide roof um, but other than that very nicely detailed model all round and very nicely printed as well with all the lining and the colour so on to the other end you can see we've got exactly the same lights cabs uh, lighting etc again wrongly decorated pipes also destination board of Baker Street the roof has uh, some nice rain strips on above the doors and some ventilation ducts Okay, looking on the underside of a locomotive now, uh, you can see the two bogies which uh, pick up power and also uh, drive the locomotive. Um, you can also see 
lovely detail on the undersides of the, um, the pickup shoes. Um, but it is very heavy, this locomotive. I said 389 grams, which is um, a great weight for pulling quite a bit of, um, quite a few coaches. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, there are four screws underneath to get the uh, body cover off. You can see one there and one on the underside up here. There's four of those, two there and two at the back. Now this model does have a slightly different tooling as you can see behind the grey boxes just here. You can see there's some slightly different um, mouldings and you can see the normal braking system there. Um, but some nice detail actually captured on the underneath and uh, yeah it makes for a great model. So that leaves me with just a couple of things to summarise this. Um, £110 for this model is quite a good price. Um, others are around about 108 to 118 Um Good price for a model, nicely decorated, but there are little errors in areas, as I've picked up on before. I'm sure there are others for people that know these locomotives a bit better than I. Um, but overall, I'm quite happy with what I've got. And... Um, Overall, I'd say it's about 9 out of 10, um, but we'll see how well it goes as well. Um, so hopefully, in the next couple of days, I'll put a chip in, and I'll take it to a, a layout down here, and give it a good run, and capture a bit of action on that for you, and also add it on the end. Um, I hope this has helped make a decision if you wish to buy one of these. I don't think they'll be around for very long. Um... I hope you enjoyed the review and hopefully there will be a couple more videos on their way very soon. And uh, if this is the last time I put one up before Christmas, I hope everyone has a good Christmas and a happy new year.